we are back at Dorfko Cup 21 with the second semi-final. With me now here is Typhon Hawk, who's back from the great halls of Dorfko. Exactly. I made a short trip over. It is like five minutes per with a bicycle, so... Twelve minutes? Five minutes. Oh, five I, well, well, I, I walked 12 minutes. I just wanted yeah. to ask, how slow are you? <laughs> no, no, no. Five minutes. I actually had to wait for the, the train. Yeah, the train is always coming. Yeah, the tr train is also awful, awful and awesome at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most really interesting to see how everything is shaping up at the location. A lot of players now are uh, watching and, you know, we have... By now, we have quite the community sitting there and talking with each other. Uh, Harley Keaton is... Uh, lost in the tournament and now he is trying to reach legend mm. at least when I was there he was still trying to reach legend be, uh, not of course not today but uh, for the end of the month because this month already um, is for the next season so mm. that you can already get points for reaching legend so yeah I, I read that the Dreamhack Winter is the first tournament where you can get points for the yeah and uh, also the Tavern Hero uh, there's already a post about the Tavern Hero for next season for January so we are most likely going to host at least one Tavern Hero tournament in January, yep. if not two. Stay tuned for that. But uh, as I said, a big shout out to all the players at the Dorfku right now who are still watching us here, stu uh, who are still th uh, there and with us. Um, also, guys, give a big pat on the back of Kanzler, please. He's doing a tremendous job over there alone without us. Yeah, Tesh is actually back. So. Ah, Tesh is also back. Welcome back. Yeah. But still, we are a big family and we got separated by the power of the internet because it's weak over there and strong here. And oh, by the power. Un, un, hmm? uh, the, the not, uh, not uh, existing power of telecom. Yeah. Um, not allowing us to, to get better stall. internet at the uh, location. So now we yes. are sitting here. Uh, it's, it's nice to be here also. It's, it's, it's cool to have the stream separated from the room where the people watch. But... I would have preferred to just have a separate room in the location instead yeah, of having a room one kilometer away. I uh, I can totally understand the players that say it's it's something is missing when we don't have the uh, casting area in the in the um, something is missing. Yeah, um, and it's it's I think it's quite nice to see how we are sitting there working and getting the stream done, and now that's not possible anymore. So because now we are here, but. Uh, yeah, sometimes we have to change, and uh, at least this way we can still stream. Otherwise, you couldn't see us uh, in the internet. It would be only be a stream in the location by just spectating and having everything put together there. Yep. We prefer that. Yeah, and we are still waiting for the other semifinals, which is I do know versus Iced. I just got notified that Rewind did a root ge gesture to the stream. Oh, so I'm gonna do. Hi, um, yeah, I do know Ice Team. Yes, exactly. Second semifinal. We already saw I do know against. Uh, did we see no? What did we do? Uh, we saw, uh, you uh, saw against I Sharks. Know, I do against know Sharks. Shark. Shark is by the way Togepi. Ah, a rename. Yes, exactly. That's that's okay because uh, when we drove here, we we saw them at a tra st train station, and Kansa said, "Hey, there, there's Rice Down with Togepi." Yeah, and then I looked into the registration and said no, no Togepida, but that uh, explains a lot. Yeah, and I was I felt that I know th knew this guy. Uh, <laughs> I read the email from um, with the deck list, and I was like, this name sounds <laughs> familiar, but Shark, I don't know that name. So now we know the the answer to that. Yeah. So Togepi, nice that you're around too. Yeah. Uh, let's have a. I'm going to fix the camera. Wait a sec. Yeah. That is actually true. You can see it there. <laughs> Nivo did touch the camera. It's on which side? On Typhonhawk's side. It's yes, exactly. So a little bit over to your side. Yep, that's good. Uh, uh, no. Nah. A little that's bit of live fixing of the set. Yeah, it's obvious. Okay, now it is better. Okay, let's see... We can see that uh, the the players are getting ready. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Just put them in the background of us. Yeah. Just here, there, the scene. Yeah, yeah. There they are. So we've got. Oh, who's here? Who's here? Let's see. Who is it? It's it's Ice T on your side. Ice T on my side. I do know is on my side. So people, give it up for Ice T and 
over there is. I don't know. And let's see if I got this right. I've got it wrong, obviously. So I'm going to need to switch the players in our streaming layout. But that's not much of an issue. Tuck. And that's done. And we're going to put I don't know here. And now it should fix itself. Okay. So we are ready. Let's ask the players what has been banned. Obviously, these two players, they had a longer break because the other semifinal was already running when their match was finished. Yeah. So they could take a longer look at the decklist of the other. I don't know if they already played each other in this tournament. No, I don't think so. Uh, um, Ice-T basically played uh, Leo Lockhead, Dr. Raki, Leo Lockhead, Dr. Raki, and now the last game was against Thrill House. Yeah, also so uh, it, it wouldn't make sense that they... If they were in the same group, they only could meet in the final. Um, okay. So, both players banned the Shaman. Yeah. And we will be going straight into the game. Hopefully. The players got the signal to go. Yes. So. And I see them starting. Um, I do know is... No, I can't spectate him. Yeah, we will have to figure out what is going on here. So our main PC is at the moment not... Oh, we still need to leave that. <laughs> okay, so a slight mistake here. And okay. we will be going into the match. Yeah, which is uh, for you on the bottom side, I do know as a warrior and Ice-T on the top. As a hunter, please turn on the computer sound a bit. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the... I like the sound. Um, what kind of decks do we see here? Let's find the deck lists. Um, we have... I don't know. So this is, once again, the uh, Nazoth Warrior. I think we saw him before playing that against a Cthune Warrior. And uh, when he was playing against Chuck. And on the other side, we have Ice Tape playing, once again, a Secret Hunter. Which we have seen, I think, in the first or second game we were casting today. So, uh, yeah, once again, this, the matchup where yeah, Ice Day is basically the one bringing pressure and trying to win in the earlier stages, while Aydun is trying to yeah survive and then have his uh, big turns with Nizoth bringing back a lot of his minions. And uh, in general, the slower deck, which will win uh, or has a higher chance to win the longer the match goes. Okay, so we're going to see how that works out. Okay, right now we have the city grandmother on the board. And one, the other one was already killed. And yeah. now uh, we actually have once again a card which is the wrong way. For you on the stream, that is a Barnes. Yes. So, uh, yeah, this card you can see over here is a Barnes. And, yeah, now you can see because it's... No, white. Oh, no, sorry. I, you, you do, uh, uh, we are turned. Uh, yeah, uh, it is a kill command then. Yeah, it is a kill command. Sorry, the, that was my mistake. And yeah, not the best outcome for a Barnes because it's just a 1-1 minion in general. You're hoping to get something, for example, with a death rattle. Yeah, or a Ragnaros. Yeah, but in yeah, the end it it's still 4-5 well, uh, on stats, in stats. So It has some value. Yeah. Not the most, but okay. Obviously, you gave him a great opportunity to trigger his wolf. And he turns it into a big taunt minion, which is great. But we have yeah. maybe an answer. What what would you do right now? Okay, we can he can get it onto one hit point. He has shield block. Just armors up. And yeah. does nothing? Yeah. Basically, he's... Yeah, trying to stall the turn here. In the end, he will still get some damage, but uh, no great options in his hands. So trying to get maybe something better with the shield block did not work out in the end, but in he only had two mana, so not a lot of options there. Now we see the first uh, trap developing for free and a lot of damage pushed face. Always face. I like it. I like the player finder. And, okay, we have Brawl. We have a sh another shield. Okay, he can get a lot of armor, but a brawl is a great choice here. Yeah. And let's see. 25%. Nope. 
but still, it's okay. It would, it would have even better if the free force survived or his own card. Yeah. So yeah, there's still pressure on him by ST, but it's he, he contained it. Yeah. He has an execute. Okay, that's a star streaker. It's not what you're fishing here. Yeah, but the problem is he has nothing to trigger the execute, so he can. Get out his taunt now, get five more health. But in, in general, we see the g basically what happened the entire day today. The, the, the warrior is just making armor, producing something to survive, while the other card is hitting him, and uh, the other class is hitting him and hitting him. And uh, yeah, the question is, is he able to stabilize? Because once again, a lot of these cards are just stalling the game to the later stages. Yep. And the question is, is that enough? What would, what would for him be a turn point to get the board back because that's the biggest issue right yeah. right now there's the misha okay the board is full with opponent's minion he has even a death rattle that will give him even more minions if killed and you have zero minions on board and on hand you have a brawl would you use a brawl right now the problem is the brawl doesn't achieve a lot i think i like the uh Ironforge portal armor up and shield slam a little bit better you can take out the misha and still get two more armors so that you only lose uh, one health plus hero ability so three health plus whatever is in the hand and that's the best you can achieve in this situation of uh, course the ragnaros will change the entire uh, equation that's a lot of damage and he is let's see okay he, he's thinking if it's face then I will just try to kill him next round with my kill command. Yeah. And otherwise, <laughs> this happens. He has full board control against nothing. Okay, and the brawl obviously here is a great choice if mm, the Dragnaros dies. It dies. And only one minion survives. Yeah, so well, that is great. Besides his minion surviving, this is the best outcome he could get. Yeah. Because the other one is a death rate minion. But you see the kill command into quick shot, into hero power. Oh, not even. He's faster. <laughs> yeah, and that means uh, first game goes to Ice-T. He continues his streak. Ice-T is sitting on the... Ice-T is sitting on the left. On the left. Yeah, uh, once again, a nice game by Ice-T. Played uh, without uh, any problems of achieving victory here. Yeah, he had solid play. We, we've s uh, seen a lot of control decks struggling today, right? Yeah, I think so. At least the games I casted. Uh, the first, the whole group stage was, I, I, I only heard you guys calling it that. six matches we casted were this deck losing yeah. every single time. So I think the games I casted against Agro, this is 07 now. And I'm, I think it won one game in between, but I'm not sure. So not the greatest stats for this deck. Okay. Is it because of the deck? Uh, I think the, the deck is fine, right? On, on the ladder, it would achieve much, maybe? Is yeah. it because everyone else brings mostly aggro decks? Yeah, I think it is the problem with the um, the other decks being a lot more aggressive. And uh, if you're playing against a, a control deck, if you're trying to, to get into the later stages, the amount of armor you can stack up means that your shield slam kills everything. And you're well prepared for, for fatigue because you have a way higher life total than your opponent. But in a lot of these decks we see less whirlwind effects than um, we saw before. And even though the whirlwind effects aren't that act effect uh, not as effective as they were some time ago because a lot of the aggressive minions have more than, more than one health, in general you still want... A Ravaging Ghoul is just more proactive than the... Uh, 4 mana 1-1 one, one with a death rattle against an aggressive deck. So in general it's still a little bit stronger. And I think some of these tech choices just uh, make the all these aggressive matchups a little bit weaker for the um, for the warrior players. Okay. That's rather interesting. Um, I just heard that I did switch the up the names maybe. Yep. So now I switched it back. Then it should be correct now. Yeah, hopefully. now it is correct. Yeah, sorry for that. Oh, to the all the ones watching. Yeah, that's cool because it already fixed uh, the issue with the text that was going out. If someone from the Open Broadcaster Development community is watching this, please 
fix texts being fixed to a middle point and not being left to right. It just sucks. But getting back into the match, we have a full board for the Warlock. Oh, Captain Obvious. Um, not much for the Warrior. Is the Warrior in big trouble or is it just normal? Uh, I would say he's in, in a pretty horrible position because he has no answers in his hand, nothing at all. He does not have a fiery warrior. Revenge does nothing until he is below 12 health. He has no um, no brawl. He has no mm, taunt. Yeah, if, if your only option is to try and draw more cards while someone is pounding your face uh, and hitting you a lot, that's not a good option. Yeah. Good call. Um, and okay. especially with the um, Malkizar imp being on the board the entire time, it means that one of the biggest draw drawbacks of a lot of the Warlock cards of discarding other cards and losing your your um, your hand is negated. And he can even uh, lose some of the weaker cards and refill his hands with stronger cards that is, are better suited for the situation. Yeah. That's really, really great for Ice-T. And we see he has a full hand. And Idunu just takes out minions one by one with spells. And that's something that you don't want to do against the Warlock, I think. Because a Warlock can refill his hand faster. A Warlock can play many minions that summon yeah. other minions. So it's not a great position to execute 1-1 one -one minions or something or whatever he's, yeah. he's trying to do here. Um, and even in this situation... You just lost your uh, four mana, mana taunt, and your opponent lost the one one imp, which spawned from his three mana card. So this is the efficiency of a lot of the minions that are run in the Zulok decks that they are so so strong. If you have the board control, because a lot of them have synergies. For example, the sh uh, with the Direwolf Alpha buffing them up and allowing these uh, trade ups where your your lower cost minions are trading into higher. Why cost wouldn't minions. you? Oh, lucky guy! Why wouldn't you play the knife juggler first? Um, okay, then now he n because he needs the minion. But I, I just have why why is this knife dragon on his hand still? You had the three four turns before. Yeah. Right now it makes sense of course because this board was full. But I would have played it earlier. Doesn't matter. Um, so on the other hand, great luck with the discard. Getting the golem, getting a card draw because it discarded the golem. Yeah. And having negated the negative effect of this card. Yeah. So it's just basically win, win, win. So and you, I you, think you, this you is going to win. You played a, a two mana, three, two, three, three draw a card. Yes. Sounds, sounds, sounds good. I and would, everyone, I would on, use ev that. everyone on Reddit is flaming Gavin 7-7 seven, seven for four. I would use that. <laughs> yeah, but Ice-T does use that. That's the yeah. big difference between him and us. And of that course. is the main reason why. Okay, he has a nice use, obviously. Yeah. Here may be a, a small mistake by Ice T of um, pushing the warrior below uh, 12 hit points because he is in such a commanding lead that doing this three extra damage is not a problem. And if you keep the warlock, uh, uh, the warrior above just at 13 health, with the amount of minions you have, it's not a problem to just calculate exactly for 13 health. You have a way better chance of not losing your board. Of course, now he just refilled it for, which was really easy, but it's still. Uh, I'm still asking myself, that it's gone. The knife juggler. Yeah, it's a lot of damage that he, I think, could have gotten out. I, I, I don't see wha which in, in the early game which card he it was better than the knife juggler when he had it, but I don't remember much from that time. Doesn't matter. So is I do know back because of that, or? Does he still have no chance? There's seven damage on the board. He is at Maybe. 13 health. It is. Um, I think we play at least two minions next turn, which will be another four damage. Plus or soul, soul fire. fire is another four damage. It's 15 damage at least. Plus every other minion that will be played by Ice T, and something like abusive is extra damage. Another. I think he still has a uh, second Maybe. soul fire because the one he played was from Lark Peddler. Um, so it is at least 15 damage. Iduna is at 13 health, plus hero ability will be 15. But then he still needs something like Ironforge Portal, which he's playing right now to survive. And uh, yeah, with this, he is not dead with everything we see from Ice, but he still has his draw to finish the game. 
Let's see, abusive sergeant. So we have one, two, three minions. That makes six damage plus two. Is it enough? Uh, it is really hard to count this because uh, we are on camera and it's cast cast ca caster math. Yeah. But was, now, yeah, now, now we can count. I think it's enough. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, probably. Minus eight, minus five, it's exactly enough. Yeah. Uh, he even gets another damage. And he could have also played um, Soulfire here and then also gotten the 3-3. Three, three. And um, that would have meant that he, if he had a um, higher cost minion that he could have also played it. So in the end it didn't matter. But in a situation where your opponent has one or two more health and you want to push this damage as well, that might have been an option as well. Yeah. Okay, so, so we are at 2-0 for Ice-T already. He is really, really going strong today. Yeah, I think it is or the, the Warriors are really not going strong. Yeah, I think it is the third time he's playing in our tournaments. So it's most possible. You are better at counting that than I am, because I just read Ice-T and say, yeah, I, I know this. Maybe I drank it or maybe it's a player. My Who knows? Yeah. It's the same with Nasty. Did you drink it or is it a player? Mm -hmm. And that's a player. I did not drink Nasty, no. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a druid against a mage. This yeah. is again a tempo so mage, I think, right? Um, yeah. Then uh, Ice Tears playing a tempo mage, if I'm remembering. Yeah. It's Günther, by the way. Günther, not Günther. Jürgen. Not Jürgen. It's Günther. Um, but without H. Ragnaros flame strike Phalanx portal. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, it's pretty much the standard. Uh, tempo mage you're playing at the moment if you still want to call it a tempo mage because with a curve ending in there you're basically the, it, it's the, the, the mage tempo whatever you want to call it the, the one of the two mages that, that you can play and the other one is freeze mage so it's a tempo mage yeah and you just got the um, frost bolt from the uh, bubbling book I think yes yeah. And here this works out quite well, pointing out the um, the uh, Flame Waker uh, plays directly into the swipe, which I think Iduna is pretty happy about. But still, there's the next minion that you really, really want to clear as a mage, as a as a someone playing against mage, because as one of the other minions, it can get out of control quite fast, but there's a really nice answer with Hello! The 1-1 one, one Sylvanas. What you gonna do? Okay, he's just gonna do the yeah. obvious thing. But uh, still think about how strong this is, because the if, if it's something else, you can just clear or deal damage to it, and then still keep hitting face with your with your mana worm so this way you had to basically concede your mana worm into f so that your opponent doesn't get it and now the druid can get out on the board with a uh, emperor thorison i call synergy yeah that's why barnes is played because this can happen yeah even if it's, it does not happen it's not that, like barnes is a bad card from the stats alone no but sometimes it's can just swing the game in your favor. Obviously, especially with this mage because he has Antonidas is a great thing, a great deal. He has many cards that give spell damage. He has obviously was it the mage? Uh, no, Druid played it. Okay, but, but also, also as a as a mage, it, it's great. He yeah. also has a, maybe he plays it now. Mm, not likely, or I think. Well, he does. He plays it. And we'll let's see it. how his luck is. But That's like not said, the worst. You get a yeah, basically the only bad cards you can get off uh, out of it are the bubbling books, and maybe the mana worm because it's clear too easy. But everything else has spell damage. It has it's a flame waker which has flame waking stuff and juggles around. Yeah. Or one of the legendaries which is a big deal. Yeah, and we see that I do not actually decides to go for the um, minion here instead of the spell, which is most often taken for the uh, Raven Idol. Because the spell has synergy with possibly uh, Maligos and makes your Arcane Giants even cheaper because you can use one card to make it two mana cheaper. Uh, interesting choice here. Of course, uh, the Stampeding Kodo can be really nice 
Flame Waker, Mana Worm are, are good targets. But I think that's actually the only target. So yes. Yeah, one. you don't want to target a bubbling book with it or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, but a Flame Waker, dealing, uh, targeting a Flame Waker is the main thing you want to do with that, obviously. Yeah. Flame Waker is one of the main cards of the uh, Tempo Mage. Um, so getting rid of that is a big, big thing for you. Yeah. We have an Antonidas in the hand of Ice-T. Antonidas is a great card if you can trigger directly something with it or if it survives a turn. Yeah. I don't see it surviving a turn. Oh, oh maybe now? Now it's okay. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Giant, he needs to deal with that. But um, normally in Antonidas, you most likely get rid of him in one turn. If you can. Yeah, that was quite a strong turn from, from Iduno getting out uh, yeah, 12 12 on, uh, in stats, clearing the opponent's board and uh, drawing a card in it's all of strong. it. Okay. And Not knowing that the opponent drew a minion and that's a Kodo, I think I would. You could clear the, the, the Akin Giant or you could freeze it just with the, uh, with the fire Flame Waker and card draw. What would you do? For the yeah. uh, do, you don't can or direct card draw, okay. He goes the for thing direct is, card draw. Uh, what are you hoping to draw to clear the giant? Most of the answers aren't that strong against the giant. I think he's he's, he's fixed on he will freeze the giant. Yeah, I think it that, seems that's, that way. that's the fixed point of his tactic. Now he plays the mana worm. Also this little guy, yeah, and then just freeze it. And maybe play the I yeah, if he had known that there's a code on uh, maybe he he will sacrifice the code on now. That would be great. But there's already an answer for the flame waker in form of the swipe. Yeah, you could just swipe uh now, clear both minions if you want to. Or you use the uh code on. both of the options are fine, I think. Yep. This way your uh, giant, uh, your Drake is going down to one health, but you know that there's still the giant that needs to be cleared. And on top of that, you still have the um, Maligos. And if your opponent uses a lot of his burn right now, then what is Flame the answer for Maligos? Waker, Arcane Explosion, Fireball? Yeah. You have no kill Spellsman and then left for uh, Atonitis. That's a problem. Yeah. But you need to get rid of that 8 5. But in the end, how, d how do you want to win this game from this point on, anyways? Because if you clear the board, you have no burst to kill the opponent. And most of the, the damage of this deck is coming from the, the combination of something like Flame Waker, like Mana Worm, to deal more damage than the okay. cost would. He wants to juggle him down and to keep Yeah, okay, and, and keep the Arcane Explosion alive to use it with Antonidas, because he knows that he needs Antonidas fireballs to end this game. Yeah. There's a knowledge that they would draw three cards for him. And those cards are not the worst. No. Getting one that is great with his Malagos. And, and Ragnaros is never a bad thing. In That's such a nice a pickup. Ooh. Because this means that he can... Two fireballs for yeah. free. And now he can actually... No, he can't play... Oh, oh, he can play one fireball instantly. Because he can play the Arcane... And what's the name? Arcane Blast. Or for free. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, follow up directly with a with a fireball. Still, uh, he is in, in quite a rough shape with uh, flame strike. Mali goes on the board. Flame strike won't change much. Antonidas, Arcane blast the Kodo. And then I think we are going to see Arcane Explosion and then, yeah. Yeah. Don't know if that's the greatest turn. Maybe you uh, would you have used the, the Fireball instead? Because you get a free Fireball out of it. And then you mm. still have the Arcane Explosion. Yeah, but on the other end, what do you do with the Fireball? The Arcane Expl Explosion is the way weaker card. And this, this way the turn worked out as well. The thing I was wondering about is if you... Um, just use flame strike that turn, even if it's really suboptimal. Oh, there's the ref. Goodbye. He even draws a card. <laughs> yeah. Another ref. Um, because if you flame strike the turn before, you have the chance to clear the Maligos this turn with your um, 
with your Antonidas. Mm -hmm. And now you're sitting on a flame shock which reduces the nothing. It is a gamble that your opponent does not have any damage to use with Maligos. But if Maligos survives both turns, then maybe just take the higher risk, which has the higher reward, to to win the game. Okay, we're gonna see Flame Strike and Freeze. Yep. And next turn he can clear the board. That's really nice for him. But there's a Ragnaros sitting for. Oh, this is game. Bye bye. Ragnaros plus uh, Ragnaros plus a Moonfire. Fire. And. I do know saves his face and we are two to one, right? Two to one, exactly. That's my boy. So But it was still a, a rough match. Yeah, definitely. Um and it took quite long for for my uh, for, for I do know to win it in the end. While he had a really really nice start with the um, first flame waker being directly cleared. Um with a swipe that brought him in a really good position because the, the ice stick could never really develop any, any tempo to use because the longer the the um, mage minions the flame waker the mana worm stick on the board the more they value they generate obviously yeah so shutting them down instantly made it a lot easier for i don't know i would say yeah yeah if he cannot do that, he would die in turn four to five. That's, that's something yeah. that I really love on ladder as mage. Sometimes you get these these perfect draws, and your opponent can get nothing to do against. And in, in turn five, you have like a a seven three man of them on the board behind two taunts, and your opponent yeah. is just sitting there and tilts. That, that's really yeah. nice. I like that. This this mage deck has some insane openings. Yeah. Yeah. But that is not the opening you're wishing for because in an tonight is on start, an Azure Drake. Yeah. That's not cool. You lose your mana worm in turn two because you could not, uh, and your opponent lose nothing because you could not improve it. Could not play any spells because you don't got any. And there's a Flame Strike. Which is okay. also not helpful. Iron Jesus is not with Ice T right now. He's playing a Flame Waker to at least play something. But yeah, obviously. But I'm, I'm not sure if that's the right play because. At the moment, you're not taking a lot of damage, and you're using one of your most uh, you're losing one of your most valuable cards here. Probably, uh, yeah, maybe not. But there's the chance to lose one of your most valuable cards in the Flame Waker, which can, anyways, not generate next value next time because you do not have any spells with it. And if you would just wait, ping the one one so that it does not take any damage. Um, you still have the chance to have the swing turn, and that is, I think, something where you have to, what you have to aim for in the situation, to just have these swing turns where you can say, okay, um, I play my flame wake, I play my arcane missiles, I play my frost bolt in the mid game, and I try to retake the board that way. And now he just forfeited this uh, yes. this possibility. But it did a lot more than I thought. At least yeah. I didn't have to sacrifice some minions into it. Didn't expect that. Um, but yeah, still, I do know now has a lot of damage on the board, and the only thing that can clear them right now for IST is a flame strike, which is two turns away. Okay, we've got an Azure Drake. That's yeah. you cannot Nothing do anything else. And get a fireball. That's also, that's not what you want. Not what you're fishing for against the Zulok. Yeah, and the Zulok will most likely just lose one minion here to clear your Azure Drake once again. Yeah, and then we've got. Already seven damage of face. Yeah, that's looking harsh. And there's now another turn that I do know. Uh, Ice T. Okay, you can now play the Emperor, which is always nice. Playing the Emperor is always a good thing because it will tank six uh, five damage. Obviously, I do know one does not want the Emperor to stay on the board. Yeah, I would be surprised if it uh, stays on the board. And uh, how much and damage? Yes, he, he has nine damage, so he could. And uh, now he has actually eleven damage, so he could get him down to uh, eight. And at some point, you can even try to push past an emperor and say, "Okay." Yeah. In this situation, it would not work because there's the flame strike, which will punish him really hard. And we see that he actually clears the Play emperor safe. as well. He knows that yeah. he's in great place. Why should he take the risk? Because he knows his opponent has a flame strike in his deck, obviously, because it's a mage. And now we're gonna see a flame strike, and most likely bubbling book. Yeah, you could actually play or the bubbling book first and see yeah. if you get something. 
I don't know if there's something that's more useful blizzard. If, you, if you would play a blizzard over the flame strike here, but... Um, it wouldn't matter much because both would clear the board and the flamestrike does more damage in late game. Yeah. Okay. Which is great. What great is is the the, the final point I think. If he can get a taunt off out of it, is a yeah. There are taunts that cost five. That would be great for him. But yep. will he take the risk? Because if it doesn't, he will get a lot of damage. But not that much. We will see. Maybe draw some cards. Yeah, you could also draw, uh, try to draw some cards, develop the uh, Asia Drake or uh, yeah, something like that. Because if you play the uh, Finance Portal, the 3-2 um, will definitely survive. That's a great minion. Yeah. It's a really great minion. And Aduno is currently losing some tempo at least. He's now using the Soul Fire on a minion that uh, Ice-T got basically for free. Yeah. That's and he's even deciding to clear the 1-1. One one. I mean, he saw the, the one Arcane Explosion, but still. He gave he, he, he gave his opponent a free card draw. Yeah, and, and now by clearing these two cards, he lost 7 damage, which would have put his opponent to uh, 6, which is 1 damage of drawing a Doom, a Doom Guard for lethal. Yes. So, I'm not quite sure if that's really the right play, because your opponent isn't in the situation that... Okay, okay he has two, two flame strikes, uh, fireballs in hand, so he has the, the chance to just burst you, but still. And now it's actually looking quite good for Ice-T. Yeah, Even but the there's the Doom Guard. Yeah, but will it change much? Yes. I imagine he would have gone phase last yeah, turn. Yeah, yeah. Then he would have had lethal with this, because I don't... Well, his opponent had the opportunity to clear m more cards, but still. Still. And now we are going to see a... Not even, he does not even need to use the fireball to clear the Doomguard. No. I think we are going to see it first, and I can miss Sire. Oh, and I can intellect. Card draw is always great. He's drawing some cards. More fireballs, which are also pretty cheap. And now he can. Yeah, he, he clears the Doomguard, obviously, and or can he already... He wants to clear with uh, the... Um, 3-2, I think, now. Okay, I've got a puck here. I'm going to watch by you and you. Um, um, the only question is you, you have to use the 3-2 to clear because you have uh, lethal yeah. next turn anyways, but the question is do you play the um, arcane missiles first and what do you achieve by that? You uh, Clearing the 1-1 one -one doesn't matter because the death rate will be triggered after the effect <laughs> of um, after the um, missiles end, so you cannot uh, increase your damage there. And he decides to keep it as well. And okay. that is basically it. Yep. That is another win for Ice-T. So it is 3-0 already? 3-1. I think. 3-1. Look to your right, you have a display where Oh yeah, that's, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, it is 3-1. So we have our second finalist for today. Yeah. And also another person earning his seat in the finals. Yes. We're going to have some nice sip of yeah. iced tea in our finals. That's true. Uh, yeah, congratulations to, to him. Ice tea, who's standing over there, right? Yeah. That's iced tea, guys. Exactly. Nicely give it done. Give it up to him. Great place. Yeah. And that's basically it for right now. We're going to yeah. now give iced tea the chance to prepare for his final. Because yeah, obviously and uh, in this situation, a, a quick shout out to Leo Lockhart, who actually said before. Um, ISD played his first match of the um, uh, playoffs, you will re reach the finals today. Okay. Well done. Great prediction. Yeah. Okay. So, we are going to take a short break here at Dogfood Cup 21, powered by Rocket, powered by Heimbrad HL. I did not say Barcraft HL. Nice. Powered by TS Rand, which are here with their banner. Just get a team speak from them. It would be nice for us to but with this banner, use the banner. Banner. Use the banner. Um, and also powered by Gecko Bar over the year and Pronto Pizza sometimes. Pronto Pizza also uh, sponsored us, even though we didn't get any value out of it because we didn't feel like getting the free pizza. Don't know why actually, but next time we're going to get it. Um, yeah. So stay tuned for our finals with Nevo, I think. <laughs> 